friends, this is Tanya with Free Range Cottage, and I'm sharing a little project I did with you today. I wanted to try some abstract art. Now, I am not a fine artist. I have some people in my family that are great at that, but I wanted to try it and go ahead and share my attempt at abstract art here. So I've included these inspiration pieces that I had seen at Crate and Barrel and our house when we had visited in Kansas City and I really liked them. I normally didn't like abstract art but I'm really liking these sort of moodier pieces that just add some texture in the background. I really see the possibilities with those. However, the prices on these were quite high as I'll show you in a second and to be fair, on my attempt, I hadn't seen these before I tried to do uh, my uh, two canvases. Not that I could replicate them, but you can see here they were around $900 and some even were higher than that. But just fun little accent pieces, I think, and some of them were actually large. So I had thrifted off of Facebook Marketplace these two big canvases that were framed. They were originally from Target and they did have a abstract sort of painting on it, but it was just a print. It had some texture, but it was just a print. So I never really loved them. So I just went over them in white. I just grabbed a variety of paint brushes. I really didn't have a plan, honestly. I thought I'm just gonna play with it and see what I come up with. I grabbed some of my extra paints that I had around. It was mostly chalk paint, actually. And just found some neutrals that I wanted to use. And I got my water sprayer ready. And I thought my idea was that if I used the, the water sprayer that it would give me a little extra time to move the paint around. And it did seem to do that. Now, I have not watched any instructional videos or anything like that, and this certainly is not intended to be one of those. And I just kind of played with it. I've never been a painter other than furniture and walls and home decor pieces in my house so I thought it'd be fun to try something new this year and I think it keeps your uh, brain young if you try new things and so let me know in the comments are you trying something new this year that you never did before and I highly recommend it even if it doesn't end up being exactly what you expected at least you tried it and it's kind of like a, a breath of fresh air So I did both canvases and this was the end result on those. And you can see it had some colors that I'm using here in my house, but I didn't end up liking them. So we'll get back to that in a minute, but first I'm going to show you some styling that I did with thrifted items. This is my thrifted cabinet. I have two of them and I moved them out of my dining room and I'll show you what I did in there in a minute. And I put these really pretty vintage thrifted frames that I've had for years and I just bought the mats at Hobby Lobby and I used Audubon prints out of a book I bought off of Amazon that's just full of prints. And so I picked some of my favorites there. These cabinets I painted and I've got a whole blog post on it and I'm pretty sure I've got a video. I have to look back. I think I made a video on this so you can see those before and after at both of those places. And these frames I've had for quite some time. I think they were from Hobby Lobby also. Now inside this cabinet, it used to have glass shelves and we just cut some wood pieces and put in there most of the pieces, the dinnerware and everything and the candlesticks and everything in here is thrifted for the most part. I have a few new pieces in there, but I just really loved having everything 
all in one spot. It's really easy to unload the dishwasher over here and very easy to pull out everything. Plus it doesn't feel cluttery just because of those doors and the sides on there. I had the open shelf in here. Even this little light here is a thrifted piece that I put rub and buff on because I have two of them and they didn't quite match. So I put the gold rub and buff and then they matched. So normally I kept these together, but I'm really liking it in the kitchen here because I can close the doors and it doesn't feel quite as cluttery. And the same goes for this piece. I put the other one in my living room and this is all my books, if you can believe it. I have really kept my favorites other than cookbooks. This is just about everything I have in here. And it's great because I can find everything and I can close the doors and it feels not so cluttery. Now back to the paintings. These were some paintings that I saw later at one of my favorite stores in Kansas City. They have a mix of vintage and antique and new and it's just fantastic. And I just loved what they did with these sort of abstract prints and how they mixed so well with the vintage pieces. This pine dresser was absolutely stunning and I love the mix of the sort of raw wood with the black and white. So it was back to the drawing board. Again, I got some chalk paints out. I did not mix them with any kind of water this I have the base coat let's say I did use some at the end and I'll explain that in a second again not a tutorial or anything like that just sharing what I did just so you'll be brave maybe if you've never tried this and you can end up with something that probably looks better than mine at least you can say well this looks better than the one Tanya did at Free Range Cottage <laughs> so don't say I didn't ever give you anything there's a boost of confidence for you. But anyway, I just brushed on some gray and I also used this black, just a little bottle of acrylic that I had. And I decided to try a spackle knife. I just wanted something very simple, very abstract. Like I said, just to add texture. So I just had fun with it. Again, no rhyme or reason. I love black and white, so I thought, well, this ought to work. And here they were drying. I actually mixed some water in with a little bit of paint and it sort of dripped and I left those drips and everything and here they are now. I think they are definitely a great improvement over what I had before and I actually end up liking them. I moved the boot rack in here that was in the kitchen and it's very rustic so I just love the mix of the sort of modern feel of the abstract art with the rustic piece. Now, truth be told, this is probably going to feel more cluttery than I like. So I may tweak this a bit, but I was just playing and styling. And most of these things again on here are thrifted. The boot rack is thrifted. That big pot was my mom's, but everything else on here that I'm looking at was thrifted or bought at estate sales. And so it's a lot of fun to style these pieces. The wicker chairs were, are from Ikea. And this is my lettuceware, which I collect. And just a cup, well, bottle drying rack that I had bought at a flea market. And that is the rustic boot rack. That's the view from the living room into our small dining room. Not a lot of space in there. And then I also pulled out my thrifted 
napkins, which I love to always look for linens, and the basket is also thrifted. And we were talking about using napkins, a lot more cloth napkins. And also the candle sticks in the background, if you get a glimpse of those, and the little marble uh, turntable, all thrifted. Either flea markets or garage sales or thrift stores. And then same thing here in my, on my shelf in the kitchen. I put those Italian pottery canisters that I had bought at an estate sale. All of this is thrifted, but the plants and the little mortar and pestle. Now a little cute puppy update. This is Koji. He's about 13 weeks old now. And he is a Shiba Inu dog, which are such an interesting dog with a great history. They were almost extinct in Japan after World War II and some preservationists got together and here he is now. He is a beautiful little guy and he's really sweet and really smart and he definitely has all of our uh, heartstrings pulled here and we just are enjoying him so much. So I hope he brings a little joy to your day. Thanks so much for watching today and I will see you next time here at Free Range Cottage.